Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Cyril Ramaphosa delivered his final State of the Nation address of the current administration ahead of elections later this year. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the key themes affecting the economy and business. Hi, Terence. Oh, Load shedding has cast a pull over the South African economy for some time. What did the President say about this? Yes, it was a, a theme in the President's State of the Nation address. And he was giving the impression now that uh, we're turning the corner in terms of load shedding. And that's also the message we seem to be getting from uh, the Energy Council, from business, as well as Eskom itself. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, as the State of the Nation ended, we descended back into stage four load shedding. So it's an ever-present risk, and that will definitely undermine the credibility of the statement that was made uh, by the President. But there was a focus on the reforms in the electricity sector and highlighting those reforms and uh, the traction those are gaining under the uh, NECOM structure, which is a collaborative structure between uh, government and business. And uh, there's definitely a lot of activity that's been taking place over a number of years. The, the new news was, uh, and it sort of has been filtering out into the public domain through the electricity minister, is that there will be different investment models emerging around the electricity grid. This is significant because hitherto everything's really focused on the generation end and bringing private sector into the generation side of the business rather than into the, 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 the transmission grid, which is really a natural monopoly. So it's a more tricky element uh, to open up for the private sector participation. And I think the innovative models being suggested by the president are going to be about maintaining uh, state ownership and control over the grid, uh, the transmission grid. We'll have to see what happens downstream in the distribution end where municipalities still play a large role and there's a lot of failure also happening at that end and whether some private sector participation come in, can come in there. But with the, the national tr transmission company South Africa being un unbundled from Eskom, they will still have control over the, the grid, but to accelerate the pace at which the grid is developed, there's going to be a need for an injection of private uh, ingenuity, capital, skills and management. Um, because Eskom's plan, while it's generally right, uh, it's from a trajectory perspective, adding 14,000 kilometres of new power lines by 2032, adding a lot more substations, it's just not happening at the pace that is required if we're going to open up the most important renewable acreages in the country, the wind acreages and the, the solar acreages in the Cape provinces. If we're going to open up, we need to accelerate grid investment. So I think it was an important announcement that that's coming uh, because we've seen some success on the generation side, not as much as we should have seen because there's been a stop start, of particularly around the public procurement programs there and uh, so there is some movement there happily. Um, there's been some movement on liberalising the licensing regime which has allowed big businesses to start investing in larger utility scale solar and wind and other generators. So that's also important and that was highlighted. But the grid is a major constraint so I think that reform and that announcement I think was a key highlight. Then there is the deepening logistics crisis and the emerging water crisis. Were those addressed? Yes, again, both are overlain by the reform message, particularly on the logistics side, uh, sort of gaining momentum around the reform initiatives. These are obviously lagging what's happened in the electricity space. That was a very visible crisis and was only belatedly attacked, I think, in the way it should have been. And uh, we are starting to see some traction there. I think the load shedding risk <laughs> remains with us, as we could see straight after the, uh, the, um, the President's uh, State of the Nation. But on the logistics side, there's, there's going to be a lag in terms of getting those reforms through. But the momentum is definitely seemingly building around uh, uh, Transnet and opening up what has been monopoly businesses to the private sector, to private sector participation. I think very importantly in the rail sector, um, that, that there's going to be the separation, this vertical separation between infrastructure and operations and allowing private train operators onto the network. 
I think there's going to also need to be a bit like the transmission side, help on the infrastructure side as well. But uh, we'll have to see how that evolves. And then on the ports, there's already that vertical separation between TNPA and transmit port terminals. And we're starting to see a number of port new terminal, both Brownfield and uh, Greenfield uh, terminal private operators coming in. The big one is going to be whether they can get all the I's uh, dotted T's crossed for bringing in the Philippines operator into the Durban container terminal, which is an underperforming terminal. That still hasn't got across the line, but it was mentioned in the speech. But then also opening up the railway network. But this is going to take some time, you know. So, we, you know, I think that the, the, the constraint that is rail, particularly around the commodity export, is exports iron ore, coal being the big ones, manganese. I think that remains with us for some time. We're not going to see immediate action, but the reform agenda was underlined. And, uh, and uh, I think it's an important message. On the water side, a litany of projects were mentioned, but I think uh, a lot of these are at the bulk water end. And I think South Africans are really finding it on the sort of the distribution end, you know, in the, the sort of final mile to the tap is where the disruptions are really happening now. Um, so it's good that we're having these upstream developments like Lesotho Highlands, etc. but much more attention needs to be happening at the treatment and then the distribution end. And I think that crisis is going to hit us quite hard. Uh, and uh, we can see with these very high temperatures and water use rising, some provinces, particularly Gauteng, which has also had uh, is, is a massive population uh, catchment area now. It's brought in a lot of people over the last 30 years. But that infrastructure is really creaking, and I, I, I fear that there's going to be a lot of disruptions in that area. What does the SONA mean for the upcoming budget and for the reform agenda? I think the SONA put in guardrails for the upcoming budget. I think we've already seen messages from the finance minister saying they're wanting to hold the line. We know it's an election year, so there's a lot of, you know, call on uh, the finance minister for more resources to try to put some lipstick on a pig <laughs> in some instances. But I think that the guardrails that were mentioned was very short uh, mention around the fiscal uh, discipline, but saying that we're going to hold the line was an important message from the president and one that should therefore spill over into the budget. We'll have to wait and see, but it should. So there will be probably some sort of slippage because things are just not going well. I think um, with the commodities under uh, pressure and the commodity exports under pressure because of the logistics crisis in particular now, but also the electricity crisis, uh, that's, there's, that's, there's going to be difficulties in terms of getting enough money into the system revenue side. But then holding the line on the expenditure side in, is going to be vital in this election year if we want to show that we are doing the right things. And that is going to be a difficult balancing act for the, for the, for the finance minister and for the incumbent ANC administration who, as I said, would like to you know, dolly things up in a, in a fairly difficult, well, not difficult, in a, in a sort of a dismal performing um, economy in some ways. But I think the message on the reform agenda was that it remains in place and is something that will uh, you know, continue beyond the elections if this administration remains in place, which is an if because it's, it's becoming clearer and clearer that the ANC will, for the first time, dip below that 50%. It's a very small, slim chance that they'll retain a, a firm majority over 50%. And now it's going to be a numbers game as to how far they dip and whether they have to go into a big party coalition. So the reform agenda, I think, under, for instance, a say a, a new multi-party type coalition that doesn't have the ANC, I think will continue on the whole. Um, but if it's an um, ANC with a, that needs to lean on, say, a party like the EFF in coalition, I think that's the only thing that could really dislodge it or delay it. But on the whole, there's, you know, the, given the limited resources, fiscal resources, and the, the, the sort of track record, a dismal track record of both Eskom and Transnet, it's going to be hard to derail both those reform agendas, no matter who the new parties. I think, so if it's a multi-party coalition, I think that will be continuing. If it's a ANC 
plus a small coalition partner that continues. If it's an ANC plus an EFF, we'll have to s wait and see how that uh, affects the form agenda. But I think it's, it's a, the, the wheels and the gears are moving now and they, they're going to be hard to stop. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.